Iridium Off-Road Racing returns to its birthplace. Over 10 years ago, Mickey Thompson convinced the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum Commission to let him drop thousands of pounds of dirt on the floor, and Stadium Off-Road Racing was off and running. And now, 10 years later, it travels to cities like Anaheim, San Diego, Houston, Seattle, and tonight, Los Angeles, California. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Chamberlain, and welcome to stop number six of the Mickey Thompson Off-Road Championship Grand Prix. I make no question about it. It's my favorite stop on the tour for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's the longest of the courses. They'll really build up some speed here tonight. And number two, it is the highest of all the courses because of the peristyles. And up on top of the 85-foot rise and drop is my partner on the broadcast tonight, Marty Reed, with an eagle-eye view. Thanks, Mike, and hello again, everybody. And you're right, I'm standing right on the edge of what is the famous trademark of this event, the Peristyles, 80 feet straight down from here. And it's hard to believe that it was 11 years ago that Mickey Thompson climbed into a car and convinced Memorial Coliseum officials by literally driving right up over the bleachers in this section. And it's been the landmark of this event ever since. And obviously, it is something that the fans pour out here every year to watch as the trucks catch quite a bit of air and the buggies and the motorcycles for that matter as they come flying up through around the outside and then right back down towards where you're standing Mike. Well you're right about that Marty the Air Force will be into effect here tonight at the Los Angeles Coliseum. Marty let's talk about this it's really kind of getting down to crunch time we are in the second half of the season right now there'll be only four more races after tonight so they're already looking ahead starting to plan strategies for 1991 believe it or not. It is the showcase event. You're right about that. Uh, there are a lot of people here tonight. For example, Chevrolet has officials here watching Danny Thompson's effort. He's running second in the Grand National Sport Truck Points Battle. They have people here that have never been to a stadium race ever before. So obviously, a lot hinges on his performance tonight as they're trying to make a good impression. Marty, if we look back 10 years, there were two drivers that raced in the inaugural race here at the Coliseum, and they're racing again tonight. Walker Evans, believe it or not, and Glenn Harrison. Tonight, they're teammates on the Jeep team. But talk about Ivan Stewart, a guy that has won three out of six so far. He is currently leading in the point standings over Danny Thompson by 45. Now, Danny Thompson needs a big, strong performance tonight, not only to impress the manufacturers and the sponsors, but also to narrow that gap on Ivan Stewart. All right, Marty, we can sit here and talk about it all night long but I think it's time to go racing and it's racing time ladies and gentlemen at the Los Angeles Coliseum. The Mickey Thompson Off-Road Championship Grand Prix is brought to you by Budweiser the king of beers with the taste that's clean crisp and cold nothing beats a bud. Nothing beats the USA Nothing beats what we've got here Nothing beats clean crisp Right now, General is giving away hundreds of thousands of free gifts. Just rent a Chrysler Compact or larger car and get a free gift. Rent again, get another gift. Choose from over 1,700 gift items from the world-famous Brookstone Collection. Free General Rentals. Or save up your gift certificates for even bigger gifts. Discount certificates on Continental Airlines. With great low rates, free unlimited mileage, friendly service, and now free gifts. You can see how the benefits of renting from General can really pile up. I think Best Western is wrong. They say staying in their hotel is like being in your own home. Well, here I am in my own home. The neighbors are fighting, the dogs are barking, and it's my turn to make the bed. At Best Western, we try to make you feel like you're at home. Maybe even better. See, this Best Western isn't like home at all. No noisy neighbors, no barking dogs. <laughs> and I don't have to make the bed. <laughs> Let's take one lap around the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. You see the front straightaway right there in front of you. As they come down that front straightaway, the first turn, you've got a decision to make, inside or outside. It sets you up for the complete peristyle run. If you take the inside lane, then you have a shorter distance to cover 
on the top end, but not at the bottom of the course. So it's a flip of the coin. Where it really comes into play is if someone gets stopped in front of you and blocks the lane, then you've made the wrong choice and can lose a lot of positions. As you come back down into the Coliseum through the peristyles, you hook those two lanes back up again on the back straightaway. A series of double jumps, and some of these racers can take those double jumps two and three at a time. So it's going to be interesting to see who has the courage and the fortitude to go for that maneuver. Then down into the far turn, it's a 180-degree sweeper with two big jumps in there and get sideways in those, and you could end up on your lid. Then finally, all the way back down on the front straightaway as you head for the checkered flag. everybody online the grand national sport trucks heat number one these guys give new meaning to truck driving we're going to see the best in the business here at the los angeles coliseum inverted starting order the top qualifier is at the back that is roger mears and right alongside of him is a newcomer to truck racing lloyd castle that is a brand new truck like that's danny thompson's old truck we're ready to go racing and they are off and at it racing underway stop number seven on the mickey thompson tour in los angeles california and a hard left hand turn and for the first time tonight they head up the peristyles an 85 foot climb then they go outside the coliseum bank another hard lefty and now they've got to drop the 85 feet on down and here they come and they head into turn number six right now and it is number seven glenn harris who takes the lead glenn harris one of the two in this race that was here 11 years ago at the very first event that Mickey Thompson ran here at the Coliseum. And in second place, the Iron Man, Ivan Stewart, as we're looking from the in-car camera of Danny Thompson. And it's going to be bumpy, folks, so buckle up tonight. This is one of the best courses of stadium off-road racing anywhere in America. Walker Evans getting ready to make a pass on uh, Roger Mears Jr. for third. There is Jr. He is trying to follow Ivan Stewart up the peristyle on the outside loop. Walker Evans took the inside. Now, this is where you sort of just hold your breath, folks, and wait to see how it sorts itself out on the other end. Kind of hope for the best. They leave the view of the spectators of the Coliseum, and they finally appear, and it looks as though Glenn Harris and Walker Evans looks like the Jeeps are going to be running one and two, and looks as though Evans may have even stepped in and taken no, it is, it is Harris in the lead right now. Well, this is where you got to wonder if there's going to be any team tactics because uh, if Glenn Harris would have slowed down right there, Walker Evans could have taken the lead, but Glenn Harris is running his own race. Marty, you got to wonder if these two guys leading, I told you at the top of the show, Glenn Harris and Walker Evans raced here over 10 years ago in the inaugural event here, and tonight their teammates look at the ball that Walker Evans put on. Harris had a stall, and Evans just moved in and took it. I'm wondering if that is a transmission problem. Glenn Harris broke a transmission right at the end of qualifying earlier today, and he has uh, come to a dead stop there at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Walker Evans on the outside of the course now in the Toyota Jeep, and here comes Walker Evans down first, and he's going to meet up with Ivan Stewart. These two guys have gone head-to-head -head for many a year, and Ivan Stewart pokes about a half a truck ahead of Evans right now as they go through the whoop de doos on the far side of the course. Good Good racing to get it all going at the Los Angeles Coliseum. Danny Thompson is in third place, not very far behind. If either of these two there, you get all shot of all three of them, just about nose to tail. Walker Evans, he is uh, chasing Ivan Stewart down the main straightaway right now. Evans swings uh, inside. Walker and Stewart goes outside. So here we go. They climb up the peristyle. This is unique to stadium racing. Nowhere else do you see this 85-foot climb. Now they're outside. There's a good angle from outside the Coliseum, number three, Ivan the Iron Man Stewart. Looks like Evans got the jump, and he's going to come down the chute first, and we pick up right where we left off, but this time it looks like Evans comes out a half a truck ahead. I'll tell you what, these two are putting on one heck of a show. Oh, Walker gets a little nose high. Look at how he is coming over those jumps, and Ivan Stewart takes the inside line. Danny Thompson running in third place right now, and he's starting to bump some fenders and letting him know that he's there. Danny Thompson has one win under his belt already this year. Number three, Ivan Stewart, the points leader, going for his fourth victory of the season. We've got four laps to go. Oh, and this time Ivan Stewart on the inside lane 
taking Walker's route, so he's going to guarantee himself of staying in front. Now, can Danny Thompson capitalize by going on the outside? It's going to be fun to watch. Oh, we've got one car that's already dead in the water. That was Lloyd Castle's truck. That's that brand-new truck we were talking about. Here they come down the parasols, Ivan Stewart, Evans, and then Danny Thompson, and that looks how they're going to finish. One, two, three, the same way they went into that last lap, except it looks as Stewart may have opened up maybe a truck right now on Walker Evans. They're flying down the back stretch. This is the longest course ever built here at the Coliseum and in the history of the sport. So they uh, can really wind it out here. It gives them a little bit more time to get the RPMs up and uh, the speed, too. Three laps to go. Well, it's going to be interesting. Now, which way is Ivan going to go? I think he'll take the same inside line. Yes. There they go. Now they head up the turnstiles, and uh, this is the way we saw it happen last time, and we saw how it unfolded. Stewart came out first, Evans was in second, and Danny Thompson could not make up any ground and remained third. And you got to wonder if Walker Evans, Marty, somewhere along the line here, is it going to have to break away from the pattern? Well, that's it. it that, Ivan's making Walker drive Ivan's race now because he, he knows that Walker wants to take that inside line through the peristyles. He's going to say, hey, if I'm in front of you, you can't get by me. So there is the leader in the number three Toyota, Ivan the Iron Man Stewart, being chased by 51-year-old Walker Evans from Riverside, California. We got a couple of laps still to go, and Lalas watch him as Marty says this is the key, and Evans is going to follow him one more time. And Danny Thompson decides to follow that same groove, so the three leading trucks right now are all on the same groove. Everybody's following him through. Well, Danny Thompson, that's a smart move for him because he's got to reel the two of them back in, and it seems that the inside line is a little bit quicker. So we've got about a lap and a half to go right now. Stewart with the lead being chased by Walker Evans. And they're working the rhythm section, the whoop de doos on the far side, and they can wind it out now as they'll go down to the floor as they take this far sweeping turn. Turn number seven and turn number eight, and then they come back to the start finish line again. And I do believe we should get the white flag, Marty. One lap to go. Now, what does Walker Evans do? He's chasing him. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised. I thought he would try the outside line, but maybe he's going to try and force the issue at the other end. He may try and make a move on him on the whoop de doo section, the far side. Stewart and Evans, one and two right now. Los Angeles Coliseum, stop number seven on the Mickey Thompson Off-Road Championship Grand Prix. And now let's watch it unfold. Oh, and he bicycles for a second. That could have cost him time, but Evans was behind him and couldn't make a move around him. Here they go. Rhythm section. Far side. Walker Evans needs to stand on it right now if he has any hopes of catching Ivan Stewart. Stewart's going to slide around the remaining two turns, and it's over. It looks as though Ivan Stewart is going to win the heat race number one, and he stares straight ahead at a checkered flag in the Toyota. Stewart first, Evans second, Danny Thompson will finish third. Only one antiperspirant in the world helps keep you so dry with the cool, clean scent of Old Spice. Only one deodorant in the world has so many odor-fighting ingredients with the cool, clean scent of Old Spice. There's only one Old Spice. Well, Ivan Stewart, congratulations. Uh, uh, what appeared to be an easy drive from up here, but uh, from looking at your brow, it looks like it might have been a little hot. <laughs> Boy, it's hot and sticky, Marty. And I, Walker was pushing me there a little bit. He gave me a couple of taps a couple of times to let me know he was, he was in a hurry, too. But the Toyota truck ran fantastic, and uh, we look forward to doing all, do that all night. I'll tell you what, that last lap, you got it up on two wheels. Take a look at the monitor. Take us through us. What were you thinking? Well, I knew Walker was back there, like I say. He's, he's running pretty hard tonight. Uh, he's, he's getting hungry. Uh, he's a tough competitor, and I knew he was going to be right there. I got it up on two wheels. It's kind of a... One of those things, you know, you kind of got to learn the edge and that, you know, where the limit is, and that was it. Well, it was a nice recovery. Can you uh, continue this streak? You know, we talked before the race about the fact that you don't feel it's luck, it's preparation. Well, it is. It really is. Like I say, I got to give the credit to the crew and Cal Wells, precision preparation. You know, those guys do all the work, and this, this Toyota truck just keeps running and running and running. And that's a, you know, that's a credit to Toyota and, and precision preparation. We'll see you in heat number two. All right, Marty, we'll be there. Thank you, bud. Okay, he raised number two, the Ultra Stocks Instant Fan Recognition. There's probably a car you might drive out on the track right now. And on the pole, Larry Knoll in the number 88 VW, our current points leader in this category, and we're underway. Oh, and Larry Knoll stalls a little bit at the start. Lloyd Castle may have taken advantage of it, and 
they split evenly. Three inside, three outside. We also have a couple of Porsches racing in this uh, heat race number two of the Ultra Stocks. Now they're outside the Coliseum. And let's see who knows comes out first. And it looks as though it is Larry Knoll. And he is just flying down the course. He's being chased by Tim Lewis in the Porsche. And Lloyd Castle. And look at the race for second place between Lewis and Castle right now. Well, it shows again that so far tonight, the inside lane up the peristyle is a bit quicker. Oh, and we lay in the back. You see the car getting nose heavy. That's Doug Bath in the Toyota. He almost went over. Oh, he planted his nose big time. Look at him bumping and pushing for first place right now. That's Castle and Noel, and they're going bumper to bumper, rail to rail, side to side, and it forces Noel to the outside this time. Castle chooses the inside, and this is good racing going on at the L.A. Coliseum. Now let's see you out of the battle as it continues outside the Coliseum. That's Larry Noel, number 88, a three-time winner on the tour so far. He's won three out of six. That's Castle, first down the ramp. He's being chased by Tim Lewis right now. And over there is Noel. It looks like Noel's going to end up third place in this exchange, Marty. Boy, and it just shows you how slick a maneuver that was by Lloyd Castle to get the inside line and literally force Larry Noel to the outside. Lloyd Castle, the leader, 49 years of age from Bellflower. And that's a Jeep that he's riding in, that beautiful red-colored uh, ultra-stock car. Tim Lewis in the Porsche running second place. And that's Larry Noel in the VW running third. And Castle stands on it again. Look at Tim Lewis slips inside and just took it away from Castle. Tim Lewis won his first event ever in this category back in Anaheim in January. And he has not won since, but he'd love to put another win under his belt, and this would be the perfect time to do it. The showcase of Stadium Off-Road Racing, the Los Angeles Coliseum. Tim Lewis in that Porsche, the first to stick his nose out, and he's got a nice, healthy, good-looking lead. Let's see if the uh, Porsche mechanically can hold up now as he's taking the double jumps two at a time. And now the battle for second place, and it looks like Larry Knoll has passed for second. Tim Lewis is our new leader, 33 years of age from Cathedral. Central City here in Southern California. The Porsche is on the point in Los Angeles, and he's continuing to open it on up. And he's being chased by Larry Knoll right now. The Ultra Stocks first created in 1985 by the late Mickey Thompson, and it has been a mainstay ever since. All of them choose the inside this time. They find the line of Tim Lewis, and they hug him through the curves. Outside the Coliseum now, Lewis with the lead. Oh, and somebody's on their side. Is that outside? I think it is. Uh, right at the base. Oh, if you can see the leaders coming by. I can't make out who that is right now. Well, as soon as we get a number, we'll pass it on to you. In the meantime, oh, there's a good shot as they hip hop down the rhythm section, coming right at you at home. It was number 14, Paul Nisley in the Toyota. But there's our leader in the number four car, the Porsche of Tim Lewis. And he made a move on Lloyd Castle earlier and has taken the lead and has hung on to it. White flag out, one lap to go. Larry Knowles trying to reel him in. He's got a lap to go. They're diverting him outside, Marty, because of uh, Neeson's car. Just that Neeson's car sitting there. They couldn't make him down. Sideways. Noel tried to take it as a double jump, and he just got hung up in the middle portion of that second landing area, and it put him in the hydro barrier. It's a great effort. It's the only chance he had. He knew it. He took it, but it didn't pay off. And Tim Lewis, with a sign of the cross, takes the checkered flag here in Los Angeles, wins heat race number two of the Ultra Sox. Big win for Tim Lewis, who won the opening stop in Anaheim earlier this year. They say drink plenty of fluids. Swallowing's total pain. To stop sore throat pain fast, Advanced Formula Chloroseptic has the power of pheno. It penetrates nerve endings to work on contact, so it gives the fastest relief. And nothing lasts longer. Advanced Formula Chloroseptic works fastest, and nothing lasts longer. For fast relief when you're away from your spray, also try great-tasting chloroseptic lozenges. and excitement. All the action, strategy, and drama of real off-road racing comes alive in Ivan Ironman Stewart Super Off-Road for your NES. Play dirty as you tear through mud holes, over jumps and around obstacles. It's high gear, four-player competition that keeps you on the edge. Ivan Ironman Stewart Super Off-Road from Trade West. We put you in the action. And check out Magic Johnson's fast break for slamming, jamming basketball action.
Okay, this should be fun. Assembly line factory fun machines. We call them the super lights here on the Mickey Thompson Off-Road Championship Grand Prix. And that's Greg George, and that's the view that Greg George has as we have an in-car camera along for the ride. Now, the suspension systems in these are a lot stiffer than you'll see in the trucks and the cars as we go racing, and you'll get a great view of how rough it can actually get. These little things can fly, 250cc, two-stroke engines. I call them bumper bugs, and here we go. Hang on, Marty. Oh, Whoa. the car is Now, notice you can't see the landing area, and then when you come back down the other side, you get the same feeling the other way, though. It's like going off the edge of a roller coaster. Oh, it's an 85-foot drop, and these little things are built to rock and roll, so this could be a real fun form of racing. Here tonight on the Mickey Thompson circuit, the man in the lead, number six, Frank Chavez, and right away we got a car hung up on the hydro barrier. And that's Gilbert Valdez. He got hung up back in the peristyle. Frank Chavez out of San Diego, California, is our leader right now in the Super Light Division. He won the opening stop in Anaheim, California. Anyway, let's set it again. John Gurgis now in the lead. Frank Chavez running in second place. John Gurgis, the defending champion. Marty, if you recall, he won here last year, 1989, at the Los Angeles Coliseum. Well, I'll tell you what, he has got Frank Chavez right behind him as they come back down through the peristyles and onto the Coliseum floor one more time. John Gurgis has yet to win on the Mickey Thompson circuit this year, and we have already put six of them under our belts the view from third place Greg George now gives you just an idea look how his head snaps around there these cars do have suspension systems but they are a lot stiffer as we mentioned right at the top of this race interesting to note this form of racing good high angle shot of John Gurge is coming right at you through the rhythm section they run you about fifteen thousand dollars it's probably one of the that may sound like a lot of money but one of the cheapest forms of racing on the Mickey Thompson circuit it's a good what we call an entry level form of racing from here Maybe you move on to Ultra Socks and eventually Super 1600s. And a lot of these guys have their eyes set on the Grand National Sport Truck someday. Oh, I, can we go back and get my stomach, please? Oh, goodness sakes. I wish I hadn't eaten before the broadcast tonight. But ooh, inside with Greg George. And there's the far side of the course right now. And Greg's getting ready to put a pass on here for second place. It looks like he's trying to close the gap. And he's got the inside line if he can hold on to it. That's Frank Chavez, the guy that he's fighting for for second place. And Greg George indeed slips in. Oops, he had it for second. And he still has it as they go to turn number eight. So Greg George now officially in second place. And the only guy in front of him right now that our camera will see will be John Gurgis. And look at that, Chavez tried to make up some ground real quick, but can you imagine how quickly he recovered and only lost one spot out of that whole 360? Yes, yeah, the number seven of Don Archibald managed to move into third spot in front of Chavez. Nice, nice recovery. John Gurgis, the leader, 21 years of age, out of Southgate, California, here in Southern California. There's a good tight shot of John inside the stadium super light. Now, that is lap traffic at the very bottom of the screen. So, uh, do not wait. Oh, wait a minute. It looks like Greg George has come to a stop. There he is. He is out of this race. It looks like the motor has let go. And as he comes to a stop, well, there's our in-car camera. That's, that's the only view that we'll have, a, have that of it right now. So, Greg George in the stadium super light is going to watch the rest of the field go on by. That's happened to him a couple of times this year. Real battle now for second place between Frank Chavez and Don Archibald. They are going at it. Behind this man, John Gurgis, he's our leader. Archibald is 30 years of age from Granada Hills, California. Chavez from San Diego, and that has turned out to be the real battle on the course. Frank, uh, rather John Gurgis, in the number five stadium superlight, is pretty much walking away with the lead right now. Oh, and there's another vehicle, Terry Peterson. He's lost the left rear wheel. So they're starting to drop here. Stadium Super Lights. Deep into the race right now, and the mechanical problems starting to haunt some of these guys. White flag will come out for John Gurgis. He has got one more to go. Archibald in second place. Chavez still racing for third. And that has really turned out to be the race, even though Archibald has opened up about a six-car lead on him. John Gurgis, the leader right now. Bumper bugs, that's what I like to call them. They're built to rock and roll. They're fun to watch, they're fun to race. 
Oh, there's that 85-foot drop down the peristyle. Burgess now with about a half a lap to go. Sounds like a lawnmower convention, Marty, when we're quiet. It sounds like they're mowing the lawn here for the Los Angeles Raiders. This is, of course, their home field where they play in the football season. I wish I could cut my grass as fast as these guys can go. <laughs> Maybe that's the gig. You put some mowers on the back of these things, just let them loose on the football field. Here comes John Gurchis looking straight ahead at a checkered flag. Big win for him. He wins uh, a qualifying heat here tonight. He'd love to put a main event win under his belt. He hasn't done it yet in 1990. He's the defending champion from last year. We ask football fans all across America, Ow! Ah! Ow! what's your favorite part of the game? Ow! 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 Presenting their answer, NFL's Greatest Hits, an exciting new video cassette from NFL Films and Fox Hills Video. Nearly a solid hour of high-impact collisions that will have you flinching in your seat. The NFL's Greatest Hits is your introductory video to the new official NFL video collection from Time Life Video. From spectacular runs and see how they run, to a field-level view of the action in NFL playbook, to a wacky trip to the football flip side in the all-new Super Duper Football Follies. And it all begins with the NFL's Greatest Hits for just $14.99 plus shipping and handling. Here's how to order. To order the NFL's Greatest Hits, use your credit card and call 1-800-445-5700 or send just $14.99 plus $3.23 shipping and handling to NFL's Greatest Hits, P.O. Box 1880, Department 10, Alexandria, Virginia. November 11th on ESPN Sunday Night NFL. The San Francisco 49ers face the Dallas Cowboys. The San Francisco 49ers, the world champions, drive for their third consecutive title, led by perhaps the most awesome offense ever. The Dallas Cowboys have upset on their mind as they strive to regain the title of America's team. The 49ers face the Cowboys coming November 11th at 8 Eastern, live on ESPN Sunday Night NFL. Well, what exactly do you do for excitement at intermission of a Mickey Thompson event? No problem. Thanks to the nice people in Nature's Recipe, you enjoy the amazing power of America's number one monster truck, Bigfoot. It's the creation of Bob Chandler from St. Louis with driver Jim Kramer at the wheel. Here's part of that performance. Hey, thank you, Nature's Recipe. CC machines online. This is heat race number two. We're going to put seven laps in the book now. And that is Jeremy McGrath, number six you're looking at. He is fourth in the points and should be considered one of the favorites here. Looks like Chris Young, number 22 from Mission Viejo, California, had a good start. But it's Jeremy McGrath who has jumped out to the early lead. Down the back of McGrath loses a little bit over that first set of rhythm jumps and then tries to regain. But now they got to deal with the peristyles, one of the unique features here in Los Angeles. They go up 85 feet, they'll plant their right feet, they'll power out of it, and then they'll drop back down another 85 feet. All part of the excitement here at the Los Angeles Coliseum, stop number seven on the Mickey Thompson Off-Road Championship Grand Prix. Chris Young in the lead, that's Jeremy McGrath in second place. Young exploded up that hill. Boy, he opened up about six bike lanes. Chris Young, 21 years of age, out of Mission Viejo, California. California is the one that leads the pack right now. Heat race number two, the Ultra Cross. Some people call them motocross. On the Mickey Thompson circuit, we call them the Ultra Cross. They are the ultra in racing. And Jeremy McGrath continued to hold down second spot from Sun City, California. He is only 18 years of age. Young on a Suzuki, McGrath on a Kawasaki. There's a lot of Hondas out here on the course today, too. And look at these two go at it. McGrath and Young, they're going tire to tire as they head for the peristyle. Oh, he's going to try and make the pass going up and through. Oh, 
Well, hello. Boy, I'm going to tell you, I'm not so sure that's the recommended portion of the course to try your passing. That, that's concrete, folks. That's concrete <laughs> on either side. Those are arches they fly through. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness sakes. Talk about some guts. It's either guts or stupidity. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt right now and say that was pure courage. So Jeremy McGrath steps in and takes the lead. And right now, Chris Young is saying, I can't believe he passed me where he passed me. Uh, we'll have fun. We will look back on that a little bit later. That could really prove to be the... Uh, look at him now. He's all full of confidence. He's got that 250cc machine just completely winded out. Grabs a ton of air as he comes off the jump. These guys will get 50 feet out when they jump. Well, you know, you got to go back to this for a second. This is our third year here of doing this event, and we've never seen anybody try that maneuver. We've seen them cut some corners, but never on the corner going up the parasol. <laughs> Well, if, if, if Jeremy goes on to win, we're definitely going to question him about what brought on that tactic, or was he just reacting to the moment, or was it a planned move? Well, well look at that. You've got a shot right there as the, the bikes were going up and through, how narrow that is, and you are catching a lot of air up there. I mean, if you're out of shape at all, you're going to be hitting that concrete. Jeremy McGrath, number six on your program tonight. Look at him fly through the parastyle here in Los Angeles, California. Fun to watch. Good racing going on in L.A. Motorcycle madness. And here he comes. He's going to work the front straightaway now. Quick little rhythm section, whoop de doos And then he'll stand on it, grab some air. Flash bulbs are going to go up all over the Coliseum. You can hear the crowd react to it. They love to watch these guys grab the air. Now he'll take these a little more carefully this time. Now some of the guys have been doubling up on that one. There's a race going on for second place out there right now, too. Yeah, Mike Young has just taken over second place from the 22 of Chris Young. There's the battle. Young trying to bring it back. Mike Young, 20 years of age from Upland, California, moving into the runner-up position right now. Jeremy McGrath almost showing off at this point, grabbing a lot of air as he heads into the arches. There's Young in second place and Young in third place. There's the gap between first, second, and third. All three of them in your screen. But it is Young, Jeremy McGrath out of Sun City, California, who continues to lead the way here in Los Angeles, California. Jeremy McGrath was in fourth place coming in in total points, but he was way behind the leader, Mike Craig. All right, here comes the white flag out for Jeremy McGrath. That signifies one lap to go. And he is so full of confidence right now, nothing is going to stop this young man. Out of Sun City, California, look at this. Suspended animation. Eight laps into this thing, and he, he is still putting the thrill on the people here in Los Angeles, California. Well, there's the gap to second place. That's Mike Young, and that's lap traffic. The 22 is your third place, Mabel Chris Young. All right, McGrath, for the last time, we'll take a look at the double peristyles as he drops down once, and he's got one more to deal with now. He'll plant that left foot and then just totally hit full throttle as he goes up this 85-foot jump. He'll grab air at the top. And now, for the last time, he'll go outside and drop down the peristyle. And after he successfully completes that, he'll make one left-hand turn, one right-hand turn, and he'll look at a checkered flag straight in the eye. Jeremy McGrath, the winner of the Ultra Cross here from Sun City, California, 18 years of age. And the left-hand salute to the thousands on hand in Los Angeles. We're here at an athletic shoes. Three low monthly installments of only $14.97. That's over 45% off the cover price. So call the toll-free number on the screen now. Of course, the subscription includes the NFL and NBA previews, the year-end double issue, the revealing 1991 swimsuit issue, and the free sneaker phone. It's free? Free. They're free. They're free. Fantastic. What do you mean it's free? It's free. 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 You're pulling my leg. I wouldn't pull your leg. 
Great. You heard it here first. Everybody loves the sneaker phone from Sports Illustrated. And so will you. Call now to subscribe to Sports Illustrated at over 45% off the cover price and get the sneaker phone free. Hello? <laughs> That's great! <laughs> Jeremy McGrath, congratulations on the fine victory. I got to take you back, though. I mean, in three years of covering this event out here, Mike and I had never seen anyone pass going up the peristyle. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a real good peristyle, you know, peristyle pass. Chris went on the inside. I switched to the outside and then switched back to the inside, and I got the drive. Hey, Jeremy, while we've got you here, can you even describe for us and all the people at home the sensation of taking that 85-foot drop? What's it feel like? Well, best feeling ever, you know. When you get when you get the air time like you get coming down the peristyle, everything is great. You know, when, when you can do it right, that's the best time. Life is good, huh? Yeah, it's great. All right, congratulations, Jeremy McGrath. Thanks. All right, it's time for no frills racing on ESPN. The Super 1600s, no doors, no fenders, no passenger seats on these cars, Marty. And what's really important right now at this point of the year, it is the driver's standings. Mitch Mustard, after the heat race, is 244 points. That's a 34 better than Bob Gordon. And Frank Archero Jr. in 196. And right there in the front row, you're going to find Frank Archero Jr. alongside of Danny Rice. And there's Mitch Mustard in row number two. And that is the view from our in-car camera in row number four, Marty Coy. So we're just about set to go. There's a good shot of inside Marty and outside Marty, and he's the man that's carrying our camera with him tonight here in Los Angeles, California. Super 1600s online and just about set to go. Don't know if you can see the man in the yellow jumpsuit down there. That would be Jerry Stansberry, the course designer here. And he also makes sure that all the safety features are intact. Everybody's belted in. Everybody understands all the rules and regulations. And once he's uh, satisfied that they all are, he turns it over to Gary Scheiner. Gary's the man with the green flag up in the right-hand corner of the screen. And we're just about ready to go racing. So more power to you. All the drivers online, 22 vehicles. Super 1600s, the fastest of all the classes of the Mickey Thompson Off-Road Championship Grand Prix. And there we go. Danny Rice seems to get the early feed. He goes inside. Frank Archero oh. goes outside. Mitch Mustard gets T-boned from behind, and it ties up a total of five or six cars. Get a wide check because the other side of the peristyles is all clogged up. Goodness sakes, we have, uh, we have tragedy already, and we're not even 30 seconds into the race. Finally, everybody frees himself up. So Mitch Mustard, Marty, has some work cut out for him right now. He's desperately well, trying to defend that overall championship from last year. I hate to say it, but I'm afraid it's got just costing the race because three vehicles that did manage to escape include Frank Archiero and Jerry Welchel. Those are the two leaders right now. Archiero, the number two, Super 1600. Jerry Welchel, number 12. And right now, we have finally put the first lap under our belt. Danny Rice is now running in third place. So watch Welchel and Archiero going at it right now. They follow each other through the inside line. Mitch Mustard is running in 12th position. You got to believe he'll pick up some of that. We talked with him uh, earlier tonight. He'll tell you that he's a very patient racer. And here we go again. They're stacking up on turn number one. But up above are the leaders outside the Coliseum as oh. they drop down the peristyle. And a fine performance so far by Danny Rice. He's the third vehicle in your screen, the yellow number eight, right behind Jerry Welchel. Frank Archiero, the leader right now, won the very first stop on the 1990 Tour in Anaheim, California. Has not won since then, but he's in good position right now. Nobody in front of him. There are really no uh, cautionaries, although if I look, though, they're going to move him, Marty, as they, as they come to turn number one, they're going to caution him to the inside. That's uh, inside with Marty Coyne. You can see him getting tossed around out on the track right now. What a feeding these guys take. You mentioned that uh, they are moving everybody to the inside section of the peristyle. That's because the number 19 car of Troy Herbst is dead in the water on the outside line. There you see him on the lower right-hand portion of your screen. The man who leads the way, 43-year-old Frank Archiero from Laguna Hills, California. 
Jerry Welchel is chasing him, and chasing Welchel is Danny Rice. Those are the top three, and then there's the rest of the pack. So those guys are way up front. You can see what I'm talking about. The fourth place car is a good, almost a quarter lap behind him now. And for those aficionados of wine tasting, yes, that is the Archero family that is in the winemaking business. Obviously, no one is partaking of the spirits right now because they're too busy driving. Well, the only thing whining right now oh. is that engine, and Welchel buries it into the hydro barrier. Frank Archero skirts around it. Danny Rice moves into the second place, and Welchel works free, but he's in trouble. Oh, he's, look at that. he's got a broken it's right a front wheel. It's a plow right now. It's doing nothing but tearing up the dirt. That is a shame because Jerry Welchel again misfortune befall him after a great qualifying performance He's number one in his heat he won his heat race this was his night at least it appeared that way until he hits the hydro barrier and you wonder if frank archiero even knows what happened he was the man that uh, that had the lead and danny rice the real benefactor of all that he moves into second place and archiero all he knows right now is there's only one guy chasing him instead of two there's the guy from Laguna Hills, California, 43 years of age. He leads the way. And there's another shot. You can see exactly that he has no control over that right front wheel. And it's, uh, he's just going to keep trying to move around because you do get points for finishing. So Jerry will continue to drive as long as he can. Meanwhile, there's your leader, Archiero, followed by Rice, I believe, that Wes uh, Elrod has now moved into third place in that lime green car in the back as we continue. You know, in a case like this, I think he's going to finally pull it over. Maybe they made him pull over. He is digging up an awful lot of dirt out there. But he'll still can, uh, he's struggling his way. He's going up the peristyles right now. Getting a battle for third. There's the battle for first and second right now as Wes Elrod is trying to hold off Kevin Smith. There they are. Smith and that beautiful... Castro colored vehicle and Elrod in a brand new machine. First time we've seen this one out. Yes, yeah, pretty car. Lime green, so the neon fluorescent uh, colors have finally hit Stadium Off Road Racing. You're going to have to help me with all these colors because I'm colorblind. Eh? Are you really? Yeah, it gets, it gets difficult sometimes trying to. So to that's get why you always say the guy in the black or the white car then. <laughs> I mean, well, now I understand, Marty. You should have told me this earlier. Well, there is uh, something that's really interesting. I can tell the difference between number two and number eight, that's for sure. Well, they're real close, though. I'll tell you what. Uh, Rice trying to reel him in. He's not letting him get away. It's not going to be a runaway or a breakaway. Yeah, Marty is well back in the field right now. He is running about sixth or seventh on the uh, circuit. Just hasn't been able to find the combination this year to be able to push it into the top three consistently. We've got, I believe, two uh, three laps to go now. And I tell you, Rice is getting a little bit impatient every time it seems he wants to pick it up. And it must be a scary moment, Marty, when you split, because anything can happen on the, on the peristyles. And I'm telling you, Rice has come within feet of taking the lead. And I think he may have a little bit of a jump here. I'm just I, curious. This one, I think he might have a shot. If he can come clean down through here, he could make it very close. Let's here. see if he accelerates. This may be it. Oh, did we call that one, Marty? They go nose to nose, and Rice has stepped in and taken over the lead. I was I was wondering if it's nervous time when you split and you lose sight of the guy you're racing with. Well, you know where he got the lead? It was going up the peristyle. When he turned in, going up the peristyle, he didn't get any tail end slide. The side bite of the tires hooked up, and he went straight up, and that was the difference. You, you almost 90% of the time, get the extra excels. Notice how he got the slide there that time? Last time it didn't, and that was where he got the lead. So it could be even tighter as we come out of the peristyles this time. One of the unique features of the course here in Los Angeles. Now he's going to keep the lead. Yeah, he's going to keep it good. He's got it. He's going to beat him and accelerate into the turn. He's got the straight line as they come off the peristyle. So Danny Rice, 26 years of age from Lakewood, California, nearby here at the Coliseum in Los Angeles, has taken the lead. About a lap and a half to go now. He patiently sat back, Marty, and let the whole thing develop in front of him. Yeah, and, and now is when the pressure. He's going to see a white flag, and he's going to know for the first time in his Super 1600 career, all he has to do is make one more clean lap and hold off a hard-charging, well-experienced Frank Archiero. He likes that outside line, and he takes it oh, one more time. Notice he got some great side bite again. His tires are really hooked up right now. So Danny Rice could well be on his way to 
his first ever Super 1600 main event. And what a place to win it at the showcase of the ball, Los Angeles, California. Watch how he'll find the line. Archie Arrow giving it everything he's got. But it isn't enough as Danny Rice beats him to the rhythm section. Oh, They're Arch double jumping, but here comes Archie Arrow now. Archie Arrow tried to take a double jump there, and it didn't quite work. Well, he's going to put some final pressure on him. Two more left-hand turns, and Danny Rice looks like he's going to scoot his way to his first-ever main event. And what a way to do it in front of thousands at the Los Angeles Coliseum. Archie Arrow finishes second, and this is a night that Danny Rice will never forget. A great win. A great win for Danny Rice. Le mouton est blanc. Répétez. A few years ago, TCI brought cable television to Fergus County, Montana. Great ridicule. Residents report Fergus County hasn't been the same place since. Hot enough for you, Red? Well, actually, Merle, recent meteorological trends do appear to validate suppositions about global warming. Fill her up. Any good mechanic knows you've got to winterize your car. Cold weather hurts performance so you can't put it off. And what do you know? Fred Meyer has everything I need on sale. Winterize your car now and save on Xerox antifreeze, Valvoline motor oil, and dependable Fred Meyer batteries. For wet, muddy winter driving, there's Rubber Queen car mats, Robert wiper blades, and Sylvania headlights. Get the most out of today's higher price gas with savings on fuel injector cleaners and gas additives. At these prices, don't wait, because you know, winter won't. If we took your car from your garage and dropped it from two stories up, you wouldn't get very far. But if we took a race truck and dropped it from three stories, you'd still be in competition. And Ivan Stewart, the big reason for that is the technology advances of shock absorbers. Absolutely, Marty. These are Bilstein shock absorbers, and we use a coilover configuration. And uh, we generate about, eight, generate about 18 inches of wheel travel with this. Now, we should probably explain what wheel travel is. Wheel travel is the amount of, of distance you travel from the bottom of this of the droop all the way to the top of the axle where the axle actually hits the chassis. And when you started racing these, what kind of wheel travel did you get? Well, Marty, we had, you know, if you had eight inches of wheel travel, it was a lot. You know, so we got 18 inches, and uh, luckily for me, the better the technology, the older I get, the better the trucks get. So uh, I'm in pretty good shape as long as we keep going like this. <laughs> and of all the categories run on the Mickey Thompson series, the softest ride, believe it or not, is the Grand National Sport Trucks. Ivan's not kidding. And the reason for that is shock absorber technology. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. I suggest you buckle up nice and tight because the Grand National Sport Trucks are online and this is the main event. It's going to be a 12-lap affair. Let's update the points for you because Ivan Stewart has stretched his lead over Danny Thompson, 407 to 343. Walker Evans back at 317. A couple of things we should point out. Ivan Stewart is going to start on the inside front row, and right behind him will be Walker Evans, and then Danny Thompson will be right beside of Walker. So our three main players are in the first two rows. We should also point out that Roger Mears Jr. and Lloyd Castle will not make the starting field, so we are down to an eight-truck show. Okay, what we've done is we simply brought in about a million pounds of dirt, laid it on the floor of the Los Angeles Coliseum at a cost of about $100,000. It took them three days to set it up, and all for this, the big show, the Grand National Sport Trucks, and we're inside with Danny Thompson. That's Gary Scheimer, the official starter. When he drops it, they go. Just that simple. Millions of dollars of machinery online at the Los Angeles Coliseum. The fireworks go off, and we are racing. Ivan Stewart goes inside. Roger Mears outside. And they work their way up the peristyle for the first of 12 times in this main event. Now they lose sight of everybody in the Coliseum. They're outside the Coliseum, but when they drop back in, the crowd's very appreciative. And it looks like Ivan Stewart, the first one to touch down, and Mears and he will connect as they go to the far side and Roger Mears will take the lead. Danny Thompson trying to stick his nose in for second place in front of the Iron Man and it looks like he's going to make it. So let's set it for you. Roger Mears in first place right now. Danny Thompson in second. Ivan Stewart running third. Walker Evans is now running fourth. Now we talked about how important this race is to somebody like Danny Thompson. Some people from Chevrolet are here that have never ever been to a stadium event. For him to be 
able to pull off a win tonight would really help his program. Well, they got to be smiling right now as Danny is making a run at Roger Mears for the lead with one lap under our belts now at the Los Angeles Coliseum, which, by the way, was the birthplace of stadium off-road racing over 10 years ago. And now, 10 years later, it goes to 10 cities across America. We'll tell you where we've been and where we're going in just a little bit as we watch him come out of the Paris Isles. And it is Mears in the lead again. Danny Thompson in second, Stewart third, and Evans fourth. And that's the way the last lap finished, and that's the way this one's going to finish. So they're starting to stretch out here now. These are the Grand National Sport Trucks. They can cost anywhere to upwards of $250,000. The Toyotas, for example, have computers on board, and they take them back in, and it tells them everything from stress on shocks to, uh, to fuel consumption to everything you want to know. It prints it out on a computer. I'll tell you what, Roger Mears has uh, found something. He was the fast qualifier for this event at uh, just under 49 seconds, which is a very quick lap around here, but the, he was on the edge, literally. I mean, uh, just about on bicycling uh, two or three times in that lap. And in the first two heats, uh, first heat, he didn't do that much. Second heat, he came back a little stronger. Here he is in the main event and, and doing very, very well. Roger Mears, the brother of Rick, 42 years of age from Bakersfield, California, began racing stock cars back in 1957. So all those years of driving experience paying off for him tonight at the Los Angeles Coliseum. Let's check inside the cockpit of Danny Thompson. Well, you can see his view. There is Mears in front of him, and he is going to take the same line, the outside line. Notice the hand action as they go up and through the parasol. One of the first things they'll teach you in driving school is both hands on the wheel, just that simple. You don't want to get cocky with an elbow on the side window. In racing, you feel the steering column is your link to the wheels, and it tells you it's the readout to the wheels. So you want both those hands, and usually in a 3 and 9 o'clock position. Danny Thompson showing the way now as he's trying to catch up with Roger Mears in that number 5 car out of Bakersfield, California. Roger Mears had four desert off-road wins, plus a Mickey Thompson win in Denver. And in 1990, he's still trying to put that first big one under his belt. Grand National Sport Trucks, he is yet to win on the 1990 circuit. And Marty, he's starting to really open this puppy up. Yeah, I, it, it, it surprises me because of the performances that Ivan and Walker had in the two heat races. I figured that they would be coming up through here and by now putting a lot of pressure on both Danny Thompson and Roger Mears. But so far, it's just not happening. Well, in the Budweiser Nissan pickup truck right now, Mears leading the way down the peristyles. What a unique configuration this is of off-road racing. I mean, what vision Mickey Thompson had to look at this uh, this stadium 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago, one to even bring in the million pounds of dirt to lay it down on the floor of the Coliseum and then to build the, the peristyles. Unbelievable vision that Mickey Thompson had so long ago, the late, great Mickey Thompson. And as we talk about Mickey, let me tell you one thing. He has been inducted into the Water Sports Hall of Fame this summer, along with Mario Andretti and Mark Donahue and Shirley Muldowney. And the battle again is heating up for third place. Well, that's a battle that's been going on for many a year and will probably continue to go on as Roger Mears is now in the Coliseum and coming out of the Peristyles. It represents a seven-story jump. The racers call it the Peristyle Space Shot. And Lunar One lands and continues his way around the course here. The number five Budweiser Nissan of Roger Mears. That is Danny Thompson in second. And like uh, Marty said, the big race is right there between number three and number two. Ivan the Ironman Stewart and Evans. They're reeling in Danny Thompson. When he came by last time, I thought his motor sounded a little off strong. Uh, he might be running a little hot. He had an overheating problem in heat race number one. We'll find out. They're coming by again. White flag out. Well, between the two, I'm talking about Ivan Stewart and Walker Evans. They have won five of the first six tops on the tour. And they're going at it right now. They're, one thing they're running out of right now is time, pure and simple. It sounds like Thompson may have a, like a, a cracked header or something. Uh, the, the motor's definitely all song. Whoa! Here goes Ivan trying to pass him. Ivan's going to take him on the outside of the Coliseum. I don't think there's too much question about that. Oh, and they no. make contact. They make contact. And look at this. Stewart is sliding into the hydro barrier. Thompson goes on around him. Marty will rough driving look at that. They certainly will. I don't know what the ruling will end up being, but they will definitely take a look at it. Thompson's still in second place. Let us not forget the leader. And oh, my goodness sakes, did you see a mere slid in? 
the hydro barrier came out of it. Roger Mears takes the checkered flag, his first win, a main event win on the 1990 circuit. Here comes Danny Thompson. This is going to be a high point scoring finish for him. And then Walker Evans, the 51 year old for Riverside, will finish third. So there you got it. It is Mears, Thompson, and Evans that finish one, two, three at stop number seven in Los Angeles, California. Only one antiperspirant in the world helps keep you so dry with the cool, clean scent of Old Spice. Only one deodorant in the world has so many odor-fighting ingredients with the cool, clean scent of Old Spice. There's only one Old Spice. It's getting tougher and tougher to find an area of open space these days. This is Paul Newman asking you to help save our vanishing land resources. In the U.S. alone, we have depleted 50% of our tropical forests. 60% of our wetlands and 90% of our tall grass prairies. We have to find a better way. Support land conservation programs in your community. Remember, it's all we got. I gotta stop thinking about Fifth Avenue candy bars. Those crunchy layers of peanut butter, that Hershey's pure milk chocolate. No, no more. I'm cured. <laughs> Fifth Avenue, it's everything it's cracked up to be. Horse of the Year honors are on the line when Harness Racing's top candidates are showcased in the richest and most important series of the year. It all comes down to the Breeders' Crown, Friday night, live on ESPN. Rough Driving Committee has taken a second look at Danny Thompson's contact with Ivan Stewart, and the committee has ruled that Thompson did indeed get too rough with the Iron Man. Now, as you look at the video, rough driving determined that Stewart was trying to turn in at the first peristyle and that Thompson ran into Ivan. Rough driving has dropped Danny Thompson from second to fifth, and that means Walker Evans moves up to second place in the final order of finish. The Mickey Thompson Off-Road Championship Grand Prix is brought to you by Budweiser with that clean, crisp, cold taste that makes it the king of beers. Nothing beats a bud. Here's baseball watching ESPN, the total sports network. Roger Mears, congratulations. You know, it's rare that we go to the very start of the race for highlights in one of these things. Usually it's a pass somewhere in the middle or late stages, but you led this thing from the get-go. Well, I'll tell you, our Nissan just ran great. Uh, it just ran great tonight. We qualified fast, had the fastest truck here tonight, and I think that's what really happened in the heat races. We started in the back and worked our way up to the front, earned the points for the pole, I mean, for the front row, and that's what that's what gave us the advantage tonight. Uh, really had very little trouble just with the brakes. We played with them and finally hit on it for the main, so uh, the brakes worked great for the main, and... Uh, Made it easy. Well, you, you didn't well, need easy. You didn't need the brakes because there's no, nobody in front of you to stop short on you. I mean, <laughs> great well, performance. True. Congratulations. Thank you very much. So congratulations to Roger Mears. Puts that big first win under his belt in 1990. For Marty Reed, I'm Mike Chamberlain. In-car cameras made possible by your friends at BF Goodrich and Nature's Recipe. Barrier camera compliments of BF Goodrich. This has been a presentation of Bud Sports aired through the facilities of ESPN.